Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently, I had the opportunity to uh, go to Evanston and actually see headquarters, uh, Rotary International Headquarters, where just about all of the work that we do, the 1.2 million members of us uh, were coordinated through. Uh, at the headquarters, I had the opportunity to work with a girl named Sophia Martin, and she was outstanding. She took me around, showed us all of that. And this tour, by the way, um, we went to just about every single floor of headquarters itself. So with that, let's jump into the video. Oh, uh, this is Wade Demir. We are in front of Rotary Headquarters here in Evanston, Illinois. And with me I have Sophia Martin, who's going to be our tour guide today as we go inside the building. Sophia, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Now, we are actually going to be going through this building. It's 18 floors. The top four floors, 14 through 18, are actually part of Rotary Headquarters. But we're just going to look at the top two today. So with that, come on, let's take a look and see what it looks like inside. here with Paul Harris. We have this statue that was a gift to us from a Rotarian in Japan. He came across his father's measurements. His father was a Japanese sculptor who originally had created two bronze busts of Paul. One lives here in our archive. The other lives in Paul's hometown of Wallington, Vermont. And he came across those measurements and wanted to do something nice to dedicate to here at One Rotary Center. So this is a to scale uh, model of Paul. So this is how tall he would have been. And Paul moved to Chicago after he finished up his law degree at the University of Iowa. And after being a couple years into his practice, he was looking around and was looking for ways to make his business more successful, as well as create that sense of community that he'd had growing up. So he began talking to local business owners and ultimately sat down with three other gentlemen. We had Gus Lohr, Sylvester Scheel, and Hiram Shorey, and together with Paul, they make up the first four Rotarians. Now this bust was actually made in two parts. You want to tell three. us Three. Three, okay. It was actually made in three. So you can see here, if you look closely, it came over here in three parts, and then um, the sculptor came and uh, assembled it here at headquarters. The original bust was sort of just of this portion here, okay. and that one um, we have in the archives downstairs. Got it. So it's created from this part up, but there was the lower part also the original part of the bust, or was that actually? It was created just for this sculpture. Okay, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh good, good. Yeah, well, thank the, you very much. Yeah. And I guess a lot of people, uh, the handout is the handshake, correct? Yes, exactly. Oh, Extending his hand in fellowship. Oh, there. perfect. <laughs> of Office 7-Eleven, which was the office where the first four Rotarians originally held their meeting back on February 23rd, 1905. It was the office of Gus Lohr. You can see the 7-Eleven and his placard here on this door. He was a mining engineer. This office was originally located in downtown Chicago in the Unity Building over on North Dearborn Street. So if you step inside here, sort of taking a step back in history to where it all began, all of the pieces in here are true to the time period, but unfortunately nothing in this room is original to the first four Rotarians. However, we do have a few pieces to sort of help tell that story. You can see the hustle and bustle of what Chicago would have looked like outside the windows there. But they sort of sat down at a table much like this one and talked about those early ideas of networking and sort of how to create that sense of community and decided they would all meet again in a couple of weeks, bring a friend, and that's sort of how it all got started. I heard the original one was actually mapped out. They had charted out what the uh, office had looked like and then they tried to replicate the feel of it, the same with the windows and the doors, things like that. I believe, like this is to the best of our ability, to my knowledge, there aren't any actual pictures of Gus's office. 
However, we do know that his original view was of a brick wall, so we did take a liberty here and upgrade the view you. a little bit. Take care of the wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like that. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Great. The other piece that would not have been here at that time would have been the motto there, He Profits Most Who Serves Best, right. because it hadn't been created yet. Now, is that the original uh, creation of that? Do you know? I believe that it is. Oh, very nice. One of them meets here uh, at headquarters, and the other one meets at a local hotel. Okay, got it. And uh, Chicago One, the first one meets at the hotel then? Um, Chicago One actually is still located in downtown Chicago. Oh, okay. Got I'm not 100% sure on their meeting place, okay. but I know it's somewhere in the loop. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Here we are right now, we are on the 17th floor of Rotary Headquarters and uh, Sophia here is going to tell us what we have. It's pretty fascinating, the gallery area that we have. Sophia. Yeah. So as you may know, the foundation got its start all the way back in 1917 when outgoing president Arch C. Klumpf introduced an idea of an endowment to do good in the world. From there, it started with a single donation of $26.50 and has grown leaps and bounds since then. In this space on our 17th floor, we acknowledge two different kinds of donors here. The first of which is our corporate and foundation donor board. This is for any companies or organizations that have been able to contribute at least half a million dollars U.S. It's quite an eclectic group here from Bank of America, Mercedes-Benz of Brazil, and of course the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, course, yeah. who are continued partners with our polio eradication initiative. Great. Great. So you got a few more spaces there. Exactly. There's Very always good. room to grow. <laughs> good. On this side over here, we acknowledge the individual through the Arch Clump Society Gallery. This is for any individuals or couples who've been able to contribute at least 250000 U.S. All of the images in this gallery are placed at random to showcase the diversity and the internationality of our donors. We right. do have a kiosk over here. I can show you how yeah, that works. Yeah, please. Let's see how this looks. Beautiful view, by the way. It is. Gorgeous Lake Michigan there. It is. Very nice. You can see here we have a portrait of the namesake, Arch Klum, past president, and a few pieces that are on loan from his family here in the case. Nice. But this kiosk here was designed to be able to search for our donors, so we have our member gallery here where all of the darkened blue areas are where we have Arch Clump Society members from. And whenever you click on them, you're able to sort of search here and find, and it pulls up all of our donors from that country. Very nice. When you pop them up as well, it gives you their portrait, their rotary story, and then also tells you where in the gallery that it's located. Good, good. Now we have some, uh, I would assume, anonymous donors, so those we wouldn't do. show up here. Those would not show up here. Would they show up on the map, though, as a number? I don't believe that they do. Okay. It doesn't have any figures on the okay. map, so they're completely anonymous. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's good. That is a good thing. Yes. Perfect. So, and these are some of the pictures here. These are some of the pictures here, and you'll see on here it says their name, and then they get to choose the photo that featured that's okay. featured here, and then it also says what tier they're in. So mm -hmm. there's the trustee circle, the foundation circle, and then the chair circle, uh -huh. and then those continue on the platinum level. Got it. Got it. I see quite a few. Uh, Important people by Rotary standards. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, President John there. Exactly. Yeah, past President Ron. This is great. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Great. I think you have quite a few. Do you know offhand how many Arch Club members you have? Currently, we have around 650. Wow. Okay. This gallery, however, can hold up to 1,200. 1,200? Mm -hmm. Okay. Lots of room and opportunity yeah, for those I, I to aspire see that. to. Yeah, yeah, nice. You've done a good job of mixing them out too. Where exactly. I can see it would have been a challenge had you put them all in chronological order and started. Exactly. In a small section of mm -hmm. it. Very nice. And when was this completed? This is fairly recent, right? It was. It was completed in the last couple of years. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Sort of a gorgeous view of Lake Michigan is the backdrop here for the gallery as it well. It is a beautiful view. We picked a good day for uh, filming. Way to go there, Joe. <laughs> nice job getting a little cloud cover so we don't get a lot of glare. 
happy to help. Yeah. By the way, this is Joe Beveridge helping out with the camera, and Joe's uh, from Russell Hampton, one of their primary principals, and good, good worker and great salesperson. <laughs> Thanks. And Rotarian. That's right. Thanks, Wade. of the 18th floor as we walk off the elevator this is what we see it's a great setting shows all the flags from the different countries that we have in Rotary. Yeah. So Rotary has a presence in over 200 countries and territories and we have most of the flags featured here. Very nice it's a pretty dramatic entry. Coming it off is the, it's uh, quite elevator. an impressive view. <laughs> it is very impressive and on this side we actually have uh, secondary galleries. We do. Items here. Mm -hmm. We have a few gifts and then some pieces from our archive. The first piece that I'd like to point out is our centenary bell. This was a gift from a club in Egnone, Italy in honor of the Centennial of Rotary International back in 2005. It was made in the same uh, pontifical foundry as the Vatican bell, so it's quite an honor to have it here. Very nice. Over along this wall over here, we have all of our past board of directors from the more recent, sort of working our way back in history here. Okay. You can see it's a, an eclectic group from some more portrait shots, we have a few yearbook style, and then some action boardroom type shots as well. <laughs> so I don't think it was standard, it was never set up that way, huh? Exactly, it sort of, I think, varied year to year. Yeah, I see that. I see some pretty traditional ones with the uh, names and seated board. Mm -hmm. And I see we got the working board too. Exactly. Okay, this goes back to the 1940s on this this wall. Mm -hmm. And then we go all the way back to sort of when we started here with this marker distinguishing when we become an international association okay. with the first club outside of the U.S. in Winnipeg, Canada. Mm -hmm. And that was in? 1911. Okay. But it was changed to international in 1912. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. Oh, pretty fascinating. Yeah. And if, uh, does this show every year then? It Isn't does. It pretty consistent? So it starts in 1910 and then works its wow. way all the way through. Wow, that was a lot of work on the archive people. It was. They're very <laughs> diligent and hard workers. They, they definitely are. Definitely are. This is great. Yeah. Behind us here we have some pieces on the early expansion of Rotary. So Rotary had asked a gentleman by the name of Jim Davidson to go on two trips to go and visit newly started Rotary clubs as well as expose other cultures to it. So we have a map here of his tentative itinerary and then a few pieces from his travels here. That's fascinating. Very nice. See this guy traveled quite a ways here. And he this did. is in the day when you had to take boats, right? Exactly. Oh my gosh. You can see it. <laughs> boats and trains. Yeah, so the Canadian Pacific Railway and steamships is the <laughs> title of this map. And this goes everywhere. That's pretty mm -hmm. impressive. One of my favorite pieces in this exhibit here is the milestones and early growth chart. Just shows how rapidly things were growing initially. Like in 1910, we have 16 clubs, and then in 1921, just 11 years later, almost a thousand. Wow. Over on this side here, we have a 24 hour clock that was a gift from a district in Ohio. So you can see where the day and time is anywhere in the world. Okay. Day and night, that's just, mm -hmm. and that moves? It does, okay. and sort of the lines get a little bit more pronounced as the seasons change as well. It's oh, cool. I see. Oh, that is kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. And that was donated by? Um, District six, uh, 6650. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Over here on this side, we have some more pieces from our archive. One of my favorites are these bells. They were commissioned in honor of the centennial of Rotary International, and they traveled to the 100 oldest clubs with them a journal, and you can see on the back wall there, an excerpt from one of the clubs in Budapest. Oh, okay. That was a nice idea to commemorate. So each of the first 100 clubs has a bell? Uh, the bells are all back here at headquarters, okay, I believe, but they okay. traveled around to them. Wow, nice. Mm -hmm. Put a commemorative shovel there in honor of some friendship trees that okay. were planted. Um, Boy Scouts? Is that a Boy Scout placard there? Yes, the Silver Buffalo Award, I believe. Oh, the, Highest honor. Right, right. We have a long standing relationship with the Boy Scouts of America. Got it. Okay, great. Nice gift of Paul here. It's nice. 
3D. Yeah, it sort of follows you a little bit. <laughs> it's a little creepy, he's watching us. <laughs> uh, over here we have some rotary stamps from around the world. A few pieces on the last convention in Seoul back in 1989. And then here we actually have an original letter that Paul Harris wrote. Um, to a guy or a gal, she was he was courting with. I apologize um, at the time, talking okay. about sort of his ideas about rotary. Okay. Well, now these were all donated. Did you go out and actually search these out, or were a lot of these just donated in? I'm not sure how all of the items make it into our archive. We do get a lot of people donating things with significance to our archive, and they're vetted and sort of preserved that way. But we do find go out and search for, I think, a few things if there's any holes in our now, I'm going collection. to guess you probably have more than this. Is there a rotating we uh, inventory? We do. We do swap out some of these um, for preservation. Sure. sure. Yeah, so this is one of the adjacent rooms to our boardroom where some of the board of directors will go in between sessions or if they have anything that they need to get taken care of. We have the table here as well as several workstations along that side so that they can get anything that they need to done during the board meetings sort of break sessions. Very nice. I see with the view it's probably hard to get things done in here. It is. A pretty spectacular view here. Yeah. Over from that side on a clear day you can get a clear view of the Chicago skyline which I believe we'll be able to. Definitely so. Very nice. We can. And this is directly adjacent to the boardroom, correct? This is directly adjacent. There's a connecting door. Okay. Uh, is this one also have um, simultaneous translation? Head the boardroom does. Uh, this, this room does not. Does not. Okay. Nice, nice. And uh, the working stations are for staff? Are they also they're for um, anybody. They're for anybody who's attending the meeting. So the board of directors, the board of trustees, various other committee members okay. will utilize this space. Uh -huh. I see. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Most of the staff have offices here, but if they needed to, <laughs> <laughs> they probably would let them. Prob probably. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> Good to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I see by this area here, you have. Um, Sound, does it go back and forth between the two rooms? Do you know it doesn't go back and forth. So this is just a speaker for the phone. Okay. So if they needed to have a conference call in here, then they could Got do it. that. Got it. Okay. Here we have a portrait of Paul sort of later in life. This particular portrait was donated by his alma mater, the University of Iowa. It was painted by artist Paul Triblecock, who also painted a portrait of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And if you look closely up in the top corner, you can see a very subtle rotary oh, wheel there. It's yeah. a nice job. It almost looks 3D on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very nice. This is fairly new, isn't it? I it don't remember is. this it was, being here before. I believe that it was donated around 2010, okay. but I'm not sure exactly when they hung it here okay. in the gallery. It's nice, nice touch. Yeah. Perfect. Sort of nice to see him sort of later in it, life. It we is. have a lot of younger portraits of right. him. <laughs> Over on this side of the 18th floor, we have some of the offices of our senior leadership. Over here, we have a gallery of all of our past general secretaries, as well as our current, currently John Hugo. And when did they start? First one the was? first one was Chesley Perry. He started back in 1910. He was actually the wow. longest serving. He served for 32 years. On average, the general secretary will serve about 10 years, helping to offer that continuity, whereas the president changes out year after year. Right, right. Very nice. We can take a step inside his office. If sure, you like. that'd be great. Thanks. So this is the general secretary's office, currently John Hugo. You can see lots of different um, pictures of his travels sort of decorating this office here. But he works to oversee all the day-to-day -day operations of everything here in Evanston as well as our seven international offices. Got it. So how much traveling does he do as compared to the rest of the staff? I think quite a bit. Um, quite a bit. He does travel r rather frequently, I'd say maybe a couple times a month to different oh, really? events. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so he actually lives here too also in Evanston? Yes, right? he does. Mm -hmm. So he had to relocate. His regular residence was overseas, right? I believe he's from Ukraine. He's from Kiev, Ukraine. I want to say. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Oh, fascinating. He's 
I understand he's a fairly accomplished bicyclist also. Yes, he participated in the miles to end polio uh, last year. Mm -hmm. and I hear he did quite well as far as <laughs> timing. <laughs> I hear that also. He set a pretty high standard for himself, but he pulled it off. Yeah, so that's good for him. He continues with that this year. I'm not sure I know we're <laughs> gathering our team. Oh, oh you are. Mm -hmm. Good. Do you know how many come from headquarters for the ride? I'm not 100%. I think it might be around five or so. Oh, but nice. Good, good. And it looks pretty comfortable for meeting with groups of people also. I exactly. Guess that pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. Where he'll meet with some of our um, staff members and groups of three or four, maybe on the couch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Yeah. Comfortable. of the president-elect, currently Ian Risley. Okay, well, this is uh, another very nice room here. Yeah, so we'll take a step inside. Thank you. So you notice this office is a little bit bare as we just had <laughs> the year start over here. So he's just settling in, just or settling trying in. to. <laughs> exactly. So we okay. have the flag of their country of origin, as well as the rotary flag in each of our presidential offices. Okay. He's from Australia. Australia, mm -hmm. right. Then you get that gorgeous view of the north part of Evanston here. But as he uh, travels around and starts to collect different mementos from his travels, we will put those on display. He does have a section over there for his aid as well. Okay, nice. So he's from Australia. Yes. His wife, by the way, was my classmate as governor. Really? Yeah, so we get to know each other a while back. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, great man. <laughs> I haven't had the opportunity of meeting his wife oh, yet, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys know very I nice. met him in passing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, a, again, a great man. Yeah. A very nice guy. We're very fortunate to have a great leadership here. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, very nice. Well, this is a good place. He's going to have to definitely settle in. I exactly. Get a few things on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. The, the wall it looks like a yeah. big president. Our wall of honor here. We have all of our past presidential portraits here. Normally it does continue on the other wall, but we have some down. We do take them down uh, every wall for preservation. But we have last year's president, um, President Ravi. Some sort of going all the way. And he did as well. Goes through uh, 1970. Got it. So they have to uh, earn the spot then. Is it past presidents? It's not the current also. It's not the current also. Uh -oh. His portrait lives over there above those two. Got it. Cases. So you don't want to overdo that one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like Put them that. up at the end of their year. Okay. Okay. That's the <laughs> mark nice. of accomplishment. <laughs> nice design, by the way, on this one. Yeah. Do you have somebody that does one design for the interior of the whole place, or is it different groups that come in? do the presentation of these different galleries? I believe it's different groups, but I think sometimes we use the same person um, based on what the idea of what it should look like yeah, whenever we do all, any They're resolutions. all different, all have a unique feel to it. Yeah. So nice mm -hmm. job, nicely done. Definitely sort of marking, I think, a little bit the decades. We have a few of the older frames here and a few mm -hmm. of the sort of transitional. And I see the pictures mostly are them as the uh, age they served instead of anything more current. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah, sort yeah. of immortalized yeah, on the yeah, wall. Yeah, I, I like that. It's a good feel. Mm -hmm. When did you become a Rotarian? Um, 2002. All right. Uh, so looks, that was, that was Rick King. Yeah, so. Done a lot. Oh, yeah. Rick King. <laughs> there oh, right. Is. So that. Rick King was your best friend. Right, right. Do you want to tell us again what Wade's doing here? Yeah, he's signing in to the President's Guest Book. So this is for President John Durham, our current president. And we also offer up one of our themed pins for their year when they sign in and visit here at headquarters. Perfect. Can I get one of these? Yes. And a banner. And a banner. I appreciate that. Actually, we'll hang this up for the studio. <laughs> I, I don't have the card. There we go. There you go. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay. Next, we'll take a step into his office. Okay, great. So this is the president's office. Yes. So this is 
the office of the president, as I mentioned, currently John Germ. Mm -hmm. We have a portrait of him and his wife Judy above the mantle there. Along this back wall here, we have a gallery of all the different gifts that he's given over the course of his travel. Both the president and the president-elect are required to live here in Evanston. We do have two condos where they reside during their years here. And Which is walking distance, correct? Walking distance, yeah, exactly. A few blocks away, mm -hmm. right? But on average, they probably spend maybe 30 or so percent of their time here in Evanston and the other portion of it traveling to different Rotary-related events or meetings. Very good. Okay. Comfortable. I've, I've seen this a few times and it's still need to be filled up, I see. Exactly. It's, it's still a, a work in process right now. Exactly. It was a little bit fuller, but July 1 comes around and then it switches again. <laughs> and so I guess it builds up as the year goes too. It does. So, it so if you come like the end of early June, like it's very full. Max that. <laughs> exactly. It sort of starts spreading onto the mantle, the walls, the tables. Very nice. <laughs> we even had a rug here last year. <laughs> <laughs> a rug here? Somebody gifted a rug. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. And I see you have a, a clock up there. I don't remember seeing that before. Okay. <laughs> Good. A little, a little more punctual. Exactly. <laughs> nice reminder. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or maybe I suppose when you get in, you're not sure what time it is, so it's nice to know what time it is here. That, that is true, <laughs> since you have no idea exactly. where you are most of the time. Again, very nice view, outstanding mm -hmm. view. Yeah, sort of back to where. It all started back in Chicago there. Interesting buildings out there. you have any ideas? Uh, um, some of the unique buildings. I see there's a church down there that's pretty Yeah, nice. if you sort of scan the view, we have quite a few churches here in Evanston. Yeah. Um, nice setting though. Yeah. Not too many notable buildings, I'd say. Most of them are sort of private residences or office buildings. Yeah. But we have Northwestern's campus just about a five minute walk north of us. Right, right. So that's sort of where the bulk of Evanston sort of built up around. Uh -huh. but. This is the 18th floor boardroom where our board of directors, board of trustees, and various other committees will meet over the course of the year. As you can see here, we have two banks on either side where members of the secretariat can sit when they're supporting the meeting. And then you'll also note that we have microphones on the tables here as well. We acknowledge that English is not always the first language for many of our participants. So we offer real-time translation for any of the various languages that we're supporting in the meeting. We have four translation booths that sit along this back wall here where our translators will sit to support the meeting here. How often do they actually meet in here? Usually they meet here two times a year. Okay, and this is for the board or is it also for the trustees? The board of directors and the board of trustees. Okay. And then when they're not using it, we have committee meetings in here as well. Got it. Now, do you have supporting staff sitting on the back ends, both sides? Is that the plan exactly. for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then the podium whenever anyone is presenting here. Okay. And then we have the monitors in the center that are intentionally low so that you can still see across for the person that's sitting from you. I see. And have that face-to-face -face interaction while not missing anything. And uh, the Ford Translation booth, there's actually only four languages in, or the primary four? Uh, they can translate up to eight languages okay. in the booth there. They can have two people sitting there. Okay. But it varies uh, what languages that we're supporting based on the needs of the meeting. Oh, got it. Got it. And um, the curtains? Do you know if they come down during the meeting, or they is there do. a distraction factor? They do. We have a sheer <laughs> um, shade, and we also have blackout curtains, Got depending it. upon the day, just so that it's not glaring anywhere as well as as well as the distraction on the <laughs> nice clear summer day. It, it is a beautiful view. <laughs> yeah. Again, you get a view of uh, the downtown area there. chairs actually that we have in here about double right what you actually would need during a uh, normal meeting usually we have 19 members on the board but usually we can 
Might use all of them, might not. It depends on if there's anybody. For some of the committees, though, we do need all the chairs. Mm -hmm. I see. What does the average meeting last? How long does that usually go for? Usually they're at least a day. A day, okay. Mm -hmm. For the committee meetings, shorter, maybe half day, but okay. whenever the board or the trustees are here, they're here for at least a day or two. And the average uh, committee size is? I don't know off the top of my head, but I think at least around 15 people or okay. so. Okay, okay. So it includes staff people and people on a committee that are not on either the board of directors or the trustees. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Very nice. And the uh, gavel and bell? <laughs> bring in the start and end of the meeting. Got it. That's a serious gavel there. I don't think I've seen one that big used in rotary before. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So this is our auditorium, which seats just under 200 people. We have several all staff meetings here, as well as our Arch Club Society induction ceremonies. And so we have uh, opportunities for presentations here and various other meetings as well. And this is also something that some of our Rotarians use when they're visiting. Very nice. Is it set up also to do uh, classrooms, things like that, lectures? Um, so occasionally they'll do different sort of speakers will come and address either the staff or local communities will utilize this space as well. Something that we rent out as part of our sort of agreement with the building. But we okay. unfortunately can't change the setup of the chairs. So. <laughs> no. A little fixed I in see that those regard. Things very good. Exactly. You have a screen that drops down, I see up on top. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. And then we have a rotary background that usually is there whenever we're having rotary events. Got it. Okay. No control room? No control room. It's very so you, sort of. But you do have lighting up there. We do. Oh, well, that's very nice. And then you'll see the flags over on that side. We have the rotary flag, the flag of the president as well. Okay. The Tennessee flag is over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a country, it's a state. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I don't think I've ever been in here before. Mm. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, actually, with that and getting to see some areas of that, they're often good areas of interest. So my hope is for you to actually get to headquarters itself, take a look at this, uh, and look up Sophie. She'd be happy to give you a tour of it itself, but it's one outstanding place. The people there are very cordial, very friendly, and it's one of those good things where you actually get to see Rotary, how it works, and how everything gets done behind the curtain. With that, thank you very much for joining me. We will see you next time.